Hey, you guys. So thanks for listening into this episode of Tips with T. I have a guest with us on the show today, Mr. Philip. Mr. Philip, thank you so much for being a guest on the show today. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Thank you very much. It's, it's my pleasure. So what I do is I'm a physical therapist and I'm also a licensed personal trainer. And I have worked with athletes and musicians in the past. And I still work with a lot of models, but the focus has shifted. And I work with many entrepreneurs and driven career people like lawyers and doctors and everything in between that wants to increase their performance. They want to look better. They want to feel better in all aspects of their life. So that's where I help them. And a big focus is on training, nutrition, I help them with the lifestyle changes, of course, and morning routines and things they can do during the day to really keep mental clearness and being able to perform at all time, both in their professional life, but also in their personal life, which is just as important. Awesome. Awesome. So what made you decide to go in a physical therapist industry? <laughs> what made you like, why did you feel like it was a need for you to be there? Yeah, so beyond, to be honest, I always wanted to be a professional soccer player. And I, I was decent. I was okay. But around 19, 20, I realized I wasn't going to make it to, to the professional level. So I wanted to find alternative ways to get there. And I've been to a couple of physical therapists. And I always liked the, the, the human body. And I like you know, health and training. So it, it felt like a really good, uh, a good path for me. So I went to the school. And all my focus was to get to work with professional athletes. And I finished school and I got into the field very quickly uh, and been doing that for four or five years. And I honestly, to be honest with you, I thought that was the thing I was going to do my entire career when I, when I got those sort of jobs. But, you know, things changed and I was looking for new, new challenges. And that's where I got into the field of helping other very high performance but they are they have different issues they have different goal settings very different lifestyles so you can say that in a way it's similar because they as well as professional athletes needs to perform at their absolute best but it's it's another challenge and it's in total different ways you you help them get there so it's really nice to have both of those both of those ways to to work awesome i know um we were talking before and since you are a physical therapist, can you tell us like why are our mornings and night routines so important? Even though we, some people might, I know you, we are, um, a lot of these people on the channel are entrepreneurs, but like it's still very important, especially if you're still like, um, very very active. <laughs> so what? Why is our morning and night routines important? Yeah. So morning routines, if we start there, are are super important. You really want to set yourself up. For the day and there is of course different ways you can do it but if we're going to answer the questions why it's important you know it really boosts our productivity it improves our mental health with a, with a good morning routine and it what we really are looking for is also to increase our our energy because we might be tired in the morning so we want to get started as early as possible and that also leads into the productivity and you know from just from personal experience but also from experience from my client it also helps with procrastination if you get up and you do your routines in the morning, it, you have checked off some boxes. And it doesn't have to take long. I usually like to do a, a very, very quick workout routine. We're talking four or five minutes going pretty intense. It can be just dropping down and doing as many push-ups as I can in four minutes. Or I do a circuit with push-ups and sit-ups and uh, jumping jacks, for example. And I just try to get as much, as much blood flow as possible. So those are fantastic ways you can do it. Then jump in the shower for a couple of minutes, get out and, you know, head to work. So that's super important. And it's the same with, with night routines. That's where we really want to recharge, you know. Uh, and what we're looking for in night routine is pretty much the opposite. We want to get the stress levels down so we can have a good night's sleep. So instead of having a very productive day of work, we want to have a very good and relaxed sleep you know and that that has so many 
health effects on us. You know, it leads to reduced stress levels. We get better energy. We have much, much better health. And, you know, it also improves our physical and mental health. So things you can do there is, you know, try to go to bed the same time or around the same time every night. And same thing with waking up. And that also usually leads to being able to actually sleep a little bit less when you do that. It's way different if you sleep eight hours and every night you go to bed at 11 and you wake up at seven. Then if you one night you go to bed at 10, wake up at six, the next one it's uh, one and you wake up at nine, et cetera. So it's a huge difference. And that also helps with, with all the things that we talked about, productivity and energy. So these things are super important and they must be fundamentals for, for any high performer, in my opinion. Yeah, I completely agree with you there. I know like in my morning routines, I do try to at least when I'm up, make get when I get up, make up my bed so I don't get back in my bed. Cause you know, it's hard when you work from home, you want to just sit in your bed and work from your bed. Like, no, sometimes you need to get to the actual desk. So that's, I have like included that in my routine. And then what you were saying, trying to go to bed at nighttime at a regular time. Um, and then like, I try to do that. So I can be consistent with that. And then like to decompress, like I try to read something that's encouraging before I go to sleep to help this decompress. Cause like, especially if you having like a long stressful work day, it can be a lot. So just those little things I do try to include into my, my morning and my night routine. That's amazing. I really like the, the making the bed, you know, it's also, you get it, you get a very small victory right away and mm-hmm. you, you should take them hundred percent. Awesome. Awesome. Now I know we talked about those little activities, but like, what are some things that that we can eat during our routine to improve our performance? Cause eating as well is very um, important. What we put into our bodies. Cause some things can make us sluggish. Some things can make us more energized. So what are some things that we should be eating um, or try to eat to include inside of our routine for better performance? Yeah. So we have to understand that there the goal of food is actually to to fuel us that that's why we need to eat but i think in overall in society we we have lost that you know we don't really see it like that anymore but i think the best way is to to go back and try to see it like that again and you know eating non-processed food are are key and especially super processed food so you know if you want to eat meat uh eat protein try to get it from you know real sources chicken fish eggs uh, meat Uh, those are great options and for performance during the day you don't want to eat too much carbohydrate carbohydrates because that will make you tired if you have a big portion of pasta after that you will feel sluggish just like you said you will feel tired and you don't want that especially if you're going to go in and pitch meetings or close deals it's it's really like you're you're setting yourself self up for failure that way so during the day i would try to keep it light i would eat fruits and i would eat lean protein so at a lunch for example a great way is to eat chicken with with vegetables or meat with vegetables or fish with vegetables those are really good ways and when you eat that you can pretty much only go, go, go. It doesn't make you tired. And then you might want to have a bit more carbs during the night. That's uh, that's way better. And to also get the carbs, you have fruits during the day, like I said. So those are some ways to really fuel your body and think about the timing. You know, about I, I also teach them to, if you can schedule meetings during the morning or before before lunch, do that, you know. Don't put the most important meetings at 3 p.m. That's that. There's no reason for that. And you are more clear in your mind and ready to perform early in the day. So th- that's pretty much it. Trying to eat real food, not processed and not too much during the day as well. 
I'm glad you mentioned the schedule your meetings more in the morning times because like most of the time when once after the after after 12 o'clock you're winding down anyway your day is starting to wind down you're starting to get more relaxed and and you're trying to wind down your day so I won't end the day with the meeting I will start my day with the meeting so I'm glad you did make that suggestion to do so um but what are some other ways that we can improve our performance because I know you work with with multiple clients so tell us some other things that you have told your clients on how to improve their performance when it comes to eating or whatever it is that you might have been seeing or noticing a lot yeah so it's definitely two cornerstones and one of them is like we mentioned nutrition and the other is exercise exercise will have so many benefits for you both short term but also long term it's you know it will it will actually make you smarter uh, in the long run because once we get over older, we lose cognitive function. And people have tried to come up with, with memory tests and all that to prevent it, but they doesn't work. The only thing that has been proven to work is exercise, both cardiovascular but also resistance training. So that you have options. So in a long-term perspective, it's going to help with, with your mental clearness and your cognitive ability. But, you know, it's also going to help you with the quality of your life, the quality of your years you have. And also, you will get live longer. So long term, there are so many. Effects, but then I also ask my clients, and the answer is obvious to this, but when do you feel, both in your personal life, but also professionally, when do you perform best? Is it when you have a lot of energy, you feel strong, you have a lot of confidence, or is it during periods when you are stress, you might have an anxiety, you might feel a bit of depression. In what, which of these states do you perform best? And everyone says, you know, well, it's, it's in the first one, of course. So what, what I do with my clients and what everyone should do is try to maximize the amount of time that they are in the first state. And exercise is the most effective way to prevent and cure depression and anxiety, long-term stress. And on top of that, you also feel so much better. It releases hormones in our body. We look better. We feel better. You know, just just looking better. This is only my opinion. But also, like, a lot of my clients have also said this. Looking better, or at least looking healthy, will actually help you close more deals professionally. And, you know, there's something within us that we trust people that we see take care of themselves or rather the other way around we might not trust someone that doesn't take care of themselves as much you know i'm not saying you have to be in shape there are there are people that are super super successful that are not in shape but it will definitely it will never make your life worse it will never make your professional life worse it will never make your private life worse and i've never heard anyone that started to work out that regretted it never happened so those are the two things i should focus on the most you know good nutrition and exercise, both short-term and also long-term. I'm glad you said that because I need to get back into like, because I used to do my morning wake-up walks. Like as soon as I get up, I might drink me some water, drink my tea, and then I go out, I do like a 30-minute walk. I haven't been able to do that because the weather here is just off and on rainy or it's cold one day, hot one day, then I, I don't want to get sick. But I said whenever... This weather makeup is mine. I was going to start back getting up and doing my 30 minute um, wake up walks because that was very, very helpful to me. It helped me to start my mind off very, very clear. Um, so even if you have to work, wake up an hour earlier or two or hour and a half earlier just to get that 30 minute walk in is very necessary. Um, and I did. After I do my walks, I do feel better. I feel better. I feel charged. I feel like I can take on my day. I feel like I accomplished something. Um, so I do recommend, like you said, including exercises, even if it's just simple as just walking 30 minutes a day. Um, yeah, walking is super, super effective. It's it's really good. Like you said, in the morning, you can also have another benefit there of getting some sun, uh, sunlight early in the day that seems to have some health benefits. And I also say this, you know, when you have done a lot of work, only taking a five to 10 minutes walk will do so much for your mental clearness. So, you know, if you have a, a very important meeting, it might be very good to, to go for a walk 
40 minutes before, 10 to 15 minutes, that will help you a lot. And also, if you have a 45 minute lunch, you might not eat for 45 minutes, you might eat for 20, go for lunch then. You will set yourself up for the afternoon way, way better than if you would sit on your phone and reading or scrolling on Instagram. So walks are amazing. And I'm really glad that you that you mentioned it because that's something I forgot in the in the routines. And it doesn't have to be in the morning. It could be during the day, the afternoon, you know, during the night, whatever. But it's very, very good to to include in, in your life. Awesome. Well, thank you, Mr. Phillip, for being a guest on the show, giving us tips on how to improve our performance. Our, and this really is going to help with our professional performance um, as well. So I'm going to share your social media handles. Tell our listeners how they can get in contact with you if they would like to um, render any of your services. So you want to share? What are you saying? I would in here. Can you share with our listeners how they can get in contact with you? Absolutely. Uh, on Instagram, you will find me on Anderson Philip. On TikTok, you will feel me. You will find me on Philip Anderson with three N's. And on LinkedIn, you can just search Philip Anderson, and I will pop up. Uh, and the most effective way might be on email, where you Philip Anderson. It's with P H. Then you add in two extra N by the end of Anderson. So it's in total of three ends, philipanderson at gmail.com. Uh, feel free to reach out. I, I answer always pretty fast. So I'll be glad to help anyone that, that wants it. All right, you guys, please check him out. He gave some helpful tips today. I'm pretty sure it will help you in the long run with your health as well as your professional performance. If you guys want to get in contact with me, um, feel free to do so. My number is 910-317-0396. You can shoot me an email at contact at mjfinancial.biz. Take a look at the website, www.mjfinancial.biz um, to schedule a consultation. You can find this episode, you guys, on Spotify now. It's no longer Anchor. And you can also find the playback for this video on the YouTube channel for m &J Financial Management as well. So thank you again, Mr. Philip. I highly appreciate you being a guest on the show today. Thank you. It's my pleasure. It's been, it's been fun. Awesome. And all right, you guys, we will see you on the next episode of Tips with Tea.